Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon and a uh, happy weekend. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the US dollar one day chart on Coinbase. And last time we spoke, guys, Bitcoin was still operating within this wedge. We were snaking right around that $11,500 zone, guys. In fact, if I go back in here to the four hour, we can see how we were just kind of snaking right back around it, guys. That was an extremely relevant zone um, in that uh, continuously playing support, uh, switching to resistance and back and forth again. Of course, this latest breakdown. Once we had this breakdown, price tried to come back up, wicked above it, unable to. Bulls pushed it right back down. Second time in a row, bulls pushed it right back down, guys. And now we have broken out of this symmetrical triangle, if in fact that's what we are looking at here um, on the daily. And as, as I said, uh, uh, it, it does, uh, looking at the daily chart, it does appear that way uh, without question. Now, that being said, we have broken down here before. We can see that we've wicked down here numerous times in the past, guys. Really, the important level to watch is going to be this $11,050 zone, 11050 that dollar zone. That's going to be the point that I'm going to need to see a break. In fact, if I come back in here to the four hour, you can see, guys, this is the point that I'm going to be very concerned with. If we do break below this zone, if we get a four hour open and close below 11500 obviously, I do think it's going to be a quick drop to test switching back here to the daily to sweat to, to uh, test this ten thousand six hundred and fifty dollar zone guys that was where we came down uh price created this tweezer bottom came right back up guys i do think this is going to be the next major test if we do decisively break down below that and if that breaks down guys of course the next natural drop is going to be ten thousand i do i do i am going to expect a bounce at that ten thousand really that nine thousand nine hundred and fifty dollar zone i would expect a bounce very likely a decent play for uh, if you're looking for a quick scalp but i would be very surprised if it didn't end up holding, probably about bouncing once, maybe twice, and then I'm expecting a breakdown to about $9,400. And again, that's a big if. That is if we take out this $10,650 zone. Has not happened yet. Checking our moving averages, we can see that uh, in our exponential moving averages, guys, we can see, as you guys know, the all-important 21-day EMA, guys. We are testing that right now. Let's see if the bulls can defend it again. We've tested this seriously, uh, obviously, twice in the past. We had this tweezer bottom reversal. Of course, we tested it again seriously on July the, uh, July the 11th, again yesterday on July the 12th, and, of course, a major test again on July the 13th. The thing that's bothering me about this one is, guys, we now officially have, I do believe, a lower low from the prior candle. Yesterday's low was $11,079. And we have now officially gone down to $11,062. So we have officially broken this low, guys. Have not officially broken down below the 21-day EMA. Remember, a decisive break below the 21-day EMA would be an, a daily open and close, which I know can be a lot of time. And I'm looking at the overall larger trend. If we get a daily open and close below the 21-day EMA, then things could get very, very bearish. Now, if we just get a close below there, guys, yes, it'll probably come down. Test that $10,650 zone. Um, but, you know, it, it, I would that may end up holding. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but if we do get that decisive open and close below the 21-day EMA, I do think that's setting up for much, much lower prices. By much lower, I'm talking um, at least the mid-9,000, 9,400, that zone that we've been watching for quite some time that we've had marked off on the chart down here, um, which was our prior area of the top of the prior area of consolidation uh, before we ended up going parabolic here. Now, pulling out a little bit on the daily, and again, just a reminder uh, for those of you that may have missed the prior videos, if we go swing low, swing high, looking at our FIB levels, guys, we can see that we do have the 618 holding up here very, very nicely, or, or excuse me, um, overlaying very nicely with that $9,950 support right where we wicked into last time, right inside that golden pocket. Again, this is why I would expect a decent bounce off this zone. This is why I would expect this to be a nice setup if you're looking for a very quick scalp trade. But again, I'd be very, uh, I, I just think there's too much bearish pressure, guys. I do think once, if we do end up breaking down this low, guys, it'd be kind of like a domino. I think, yes, we might get a little bounce here, but I do think eventually it's just going to come down lower. And I do think we've been targeting this $9,400 area for quite some time. I do think that would be the next logical target. Again, and if this thing does decisively break down below that $10,650 zone. As of right now, the bulls are defending that zone, guys. We can see it's also held up by our 50, uh, our 0.5 FIB level. So again, this $10,650 uh, zone may be a decent area for a scalp. I'm not going to test it just because, again, we're breaking out of a wedge here. And if we do end up breaking down, guys, a lot of times it, break, a lot of time it breaks down on a lot of momentum. And I would expect it to just take out a lot of areas of support or prior support initially on the breakdown. Doesn't mean it has to happen. This may be a very nice area for a scalp. It's just a little too risky for my blood. Now, as I pointed out yesterday, zooming in on the four hour here, guys, yes, I d this does look like the potential setup for a potential head and shoulders. Now, I know a lot of people are disagreeing about this, guys. Um, I've got uh, a couple emails from you guys saying it doesn't look like um, this can't be a head and shoulders because the volume signature is wrong and because the uh, 
uh, the right shoulder came up a little bit higher than the left shoulder, to which point I would say I've seen head and shoulder patterns break out on all kinds of different volume sections, and the pattern is kind of what matters. Yes, the volume, the, the, the pattern of volume is certainly something to, to, uh, um, to keep an eye on, but I would argue against saying the, the volume pattern is completely off, guys. First of all, it depends on what we're, what we're looking at as a left shoulder. If we're looking at this as the left shoulder here, and then of course this is our head, this being our, our potential right shoulder, which could end up kind of, you, sometimes it, it, some kind of kind of bounces here and you couldn't get kind of this distorted right shoulder that happens all the time but if you're looking at this as the potential uh, left hand shoulder here the bottom the volume pattern is exactly right volume pattern when we broke up here when, it, when we were creating this left hand shoulder we can see just looking down here guys volume volume did spike and of course you're looking at that in relation to the creation of the head where we look at the creation of the head which was right here the volume signature on that is much lower than it was on the volume volume signature over here which again would indicate the correct volume signature now on the breakdown here we do not have a spike in volume as of yet so you'd be absolutely correct typically what you want to see on a if, if this is in fact com getting ready to complete a head and shoulders pattern you'd see a spike in volume right now and thing would be dropping probably already doesn't mean that can't come and it might come but that's not the only thing that you're looking at here guys now you could also if you're looking at this as the right shoulder and not this, or excuse me, the left shoulder right here and not this, then you're right. The volume signature would be off. You're absolutely correct about that. And it really kind of depends on what we're looking at as the shoulder. But the bottom line is the overall pattern remains the same. The neckline is fairly, is, uh, is very, very well intact. The pattern and the principle do remain the same. Is it perfect? No, this is Bitcoin though. So nothing is perfect. This was signaling a potential bearish breakdown without question. Um, so this was not an invalid, potential invalid head, um, head and shoulders. Um, there's no question about it. The volume signature was a little bit off. It's certainly not perfect, but I can't show you one that is perfect uh, or very rare. Sometimes they are, but very, very rarely. So no, this is not an invalid head and shoulders. This is absolutely a potential valid head and shoulders. Even if we get a couple little bounces here and have a distorted right hand shoulder, that does not invalidate that. So um, now again, a lot of people are just going to say if it does break down, that was just because of the of the wedge pattern. And okay, fair enough. You know, even if you want to invalidate this either way, however you want to look at it, guys, this does have the potential to break down. We are getting some signals in the market. We are getting quite a few signals in the market that price looks like it's getting ready to move. Again, looking at the daily, we have now broken down below the 21 day EMA, which as I said, is not unheard of. We've done it in the past. We need to see if we can defend it. Uh, looking at the four hour though, four hour as pointed out yesterday, guys, we've got the 821 and 55 day EMA all converging on top of one another here. And we also had price attempt to break back up. It did not with that area, that uh, that strong area of, uh, of exponential moving averages were acting as resistance, which as I said yesterday was a bearish sign and it has started to follow through. And we are starting to see some light now between the 8 and the 21 day EMA and we also have now the 21 day EMA crossing below the 55 which is again a bearish sign now we're only looking at the 4 hour here guys so nothing is confirmed yet as of now bottom Bollinger Band is picking it up acting as support so you know as of right now no reason to panic um, but it, this this is suggesting again this this is just again one more piece in a very big puzzle suggesting that price may end up breaking down here now if it does we do have the, uh, the 200 simple moving average on the 4 hour sitting down here right around that 10 hundred or 10 $10,650 zone, a little bit lower than that, but close enough um, that could potentially come down here. Wick on that zone provide some support. We'll have to wait and see. We also have the Bollinger Bands here starting to constrict. And anytime you see moving averages converging like this, where you've got the 821 and 55 day moving average all converging, as well as the 50 day simple all converging here with the converging Bollinger Bands, that does suggest a larger move is getting ready to come. Pulling out on the weekly. Weekly, again, even though we can see that this is just a, a an epic, epic battle, as we've been saying here for about a week now, an epic battle between bulls and bears, guys. We can see it from our shooting star, our bear shooting star candle on July the 24th to our weekly candle as of right now, guys. Um, just a, an epic battle. We can just look at these wicks here, guys. And, uh, uh, you know, really, the, the battle has not yet been won on either side. Um, now, long term, I still believe the trend is bullish without question, guys. Even if we have a larger correction, I'm still very, very bullish on this thing long term. In fact, you know my personal preference is we would come down here and take out that CME gap on uh, at, let me just pull it up for those of you that have not watched the channel in the past. Uh, where have you been? Um, the CME gap sitting down here at 8,500, guys. I would like to take this out because eventually probability says that we are going to come back down and take this gap out. But until that does happen, guys, it, uh, you know, it doesn't have to get taken out anytime soon, but I would like to have closure on that. Um, so again, doesn't mean this has to happen, just means that eventually probability says it will get filled and preferably I'd like it to get filled now before we continue back to the upside. I think that'd be a lot healthier for Bitcoin. 
but Bitcoin really doesn't care about my feelings. So there you go. So let's go ahead and look at if we just short term targets, guys, as I said, if we do break down below a uh, decisive break below 10, 11,050, that's a decisive meeting a four hour open and close below 11,050. I will think it's going to be a quick drop down here to 10,650 where maybe we'll see a bounce. Let's wait and see if we break down on volume or not. Maybe, maybe not. Am expecting a bounce down at 9,950 though. Um, but I would expect maybe one, maybe two bounces. I don't expect that to hold. If that does break down, guys, I'm expecting a drop down to about 9,400. Doesn't mean it'll have to happen right away. Like I said, we, you'll, you'll have some very likely some opportunities to scalp trade on the way down, but I do believe that 9,400 will be an eventual target and we'll have to reassess if and when price does end up getting down there. To the upside, I need to see price, first of all, get back into, let me get back to the daily here. First of all, get back into a symmetrical wedge and prove this to be a just a temporary breakout um, with a wick as we saw back here. Need to see us get it back up here and I need to see us have a four hour open and close above 11,500. Coming back in here to the four hour, if we can get that four hour open and close above, above 11,500, then I do think that we very likely want to come back up and test maybe 11.8, 11.9 and we'll have to see how this ends up playing out. Now, interest, interesting, interestingly enough, looking at price here, guys, it does look like we are about to put in uh, some uh, potential bullish divergence here. If price were to break down here again, even by a wick, it may get bought up. This is why I say you'd have to wait for that decisive break below, because if we do end up breaking down here, we're very likely on the four hour MACD here going to put in some uh, uh, bullish divergence. Uh, we, we can clearly see it here, which would suggest if price does break down to get a, a very, very nice bounce initially. Um, so let's wait and see kind of how that plays out or if that gets put in. Uh, looking at the daily chart, we can also see that the daily chart is also setting up for some potential hidden, uh, actually, is it? Stand by. Yeah, the, the, some potential hidden bullish divergence as well if price does break down here and we do end up seeing uh, price create a new low. We'd have a, oh, I take that back. I take that back, guys. I'm, I'm completely wrong on that. I'm completely wrong on that. Disregard. That's gonna, only going to be on the four hour, which actually does t does bode does bode uh, again does kind of give more argument uh, or more weight in favor of the bears on a breakdown here. Um, again, temporarily possibly looking for a nice bounce off here, but overall a potential breakdown. So let's wait and see how it plays out. Again, nothing uh, nothing is uh, written in stone as of yet. As of right now, the bulls are still defending that 21 day EMA. We have yet to have a decisive break below that zone. Let's go ahead and check longs and shorts very quickly. Uh, let's see, shorts, basically flat, slight incline, but uh, basically flat, longs, basically sidelines, which is kind of what you would expect for now. Traders basically in a, uh, in a holding pattern waiting to see what happens. Looking at our overall daily volume, sitting at about 19.6 billion. Again, that's a little bit of a decline from what we have been seeing over the last few days. We have been at, uh, uh, let's see, 33, 28, 23, and now down to 19.3. So yeah, a little bit of a decline, guys. So again, traders just waiting to see kind of how this ends up playing out, guys. Um, and uh, and uh, as of right now, I know that's frustrating to hear, but until one of these things break, until we do get a decisive break to the up or to the downside, guys, that's basically all you can do. Sitting on the sidelines sometimes is the best thing you can do, as we discussed yesterday. All right, guys, let's quickly get to your questions. Uh, let's see, James and your comments. Uh, Jay James, 88, says, thank you, working, you're the best, and don't worry, I didn't hit a lot more at all. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Uh, Tofu91 says, thanks for the updates on uh, Trump's tweets. Yeah, no problem, man. I got a lot of emails on that, by the way. By the way, guys, I, I'm, again, not a political show at all, guys, so uh, hopefully I didn't say anything offensive to anybody yesterday. Uh, let's see, Cal, uh, or excuse me, uh, Kibbum, uh, Am I saying that right? Kimbum Park. Uh, you need a new IT guy. Oh, we discussed this. Yeah, discussing yesterday. Yeah, it was an older MacBook Pro, so no big deal at all, man. It was it was definitely worth just throwing away rather than trying to replace the hard drive. Uh, ben McCallum says, thanks for checking EOS. You're welcome, Ben. Uh, Ash Velko says, sorry to hear you get hacked. Uh, curious if uh, if you'd add uh, BCH to your list, uh, Bitcoin Cash to your list. I know there's a lot of tribal hate in the crypto community, and it's still a top uh, one, uh, top five coin in the market, um, on market cap. I uh, like Litecoin, ETH, and XRP. That being said, the chart looks horrid in both BTC and XRP value. So let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin Cash very quickly. All right, and quickly looking at, uh, this is Bitcoin Cash to the dollar. Um, I didn't know if you wanted me to look at the dollar or uh, or to BTC, but uh, either one, uh, probably the dollar looks a little bit better. Uh, looks to me like it, uh, actually we did reject right here. Uh, we, we really did need to break up above about 435, uh, $435 did uh, reject there now. We are currently looking at uh, um, finding some support on the 21 week EMA for now. If that does end up breaking down, it looks to me like it wants to drop down to at least 250, where I'd have to reassess again at 250. And in fact, I'm curious on something. Uh, it rejected pretty hard right there. Yeah, actually, yeah. So we that that is that. Uh 
487 to be precise, really 485, is right there at that 236. So that is going to be a pivotal level. If it does take that out to the upside, of course, it'd be a quick rise, uh, very likely a very, very quick rise. It does have a lot of room to run to at least uh, 650, uh, if not higher, but it doesn't look like it's going to take that out anytime soon, at least. In fact, uh, if we do break down below the weekly 21 uh, week EMA, let me pull in here to the daily, get a little better look. Um, it does look like uh, actually finding some support where I would expect it to find some support as of now, uh, sitting right, that's not what I want right here um, finding a little bit of support on prior areas of resistance guys so that that is to be expected if this does break down i would say if we do break down below about 316 it looks like it wants to come back down right now and test about 320 316 i would say if that does break down it'll very likely be a quick drop down to about 275 280 ish and I, i'd have to reassess at that point if that breaks down it could go much much lower but i don't want to speculate any more than that as of right now yeah i would say it probably likely wants to come back down and test about uh 325 320 ish somewhere thereabouts and i have to see if it does get a nice bounce off that zone if we can break up above about uh 355 decisively if we get a four hour open and close about 355 it probably wants to make a move up to about 375 ish uh let's go ahead and check it to bitcoin uh yeah looking at bitcoin it just like most all coins it just looks pretty bad um it looks really bad actually uh coming back down looks like it wants to possibly test the new low here uh let me pull out to the weekly actually i'll get a little better picture yeah we just broke down uh just broke down uh, not 0 0.033. That's what needed to hold. It did not hold clearly. So yeah, we're coming down now. It looks like it's testing an area. Uh, what was resistance? Um, I would say if it decisively breaks through about not 0 0.029, uh, it very likely wants to test the low at about not 0 0.023 ish somewhere thereabouts. So it is at a pivotal point right now. Um, we need to get back above. It needs to get back above about not 0 0.035. If it can get back above not 0 0.035 with a four hour open and close, it probably wants to come back up and test the 21 weekly exponential at about not 0 0.0 four or five ish somewhere thereabouts all right jh says and by the way jh man excellent questions he's uh, he's just asked me some asked asked i say asked he asks some phenomenal questions um excellent excellent anyway um jh says uh i've noticed a tiny inconsistency sometimes you use normal old school fibs but other times you use fibs adjusted to log scale i'd love to hear your advice on which to use as i've been debating this a lot myself trying both but i don't like to cherry pick thanks once again now i'm not sure what you're referring to because i've never used uh i don't use fibonacci on uh, on log scale at least i i try not to uh, because for the reasons that you're pointing out here um, because log scale typically as far as I knew was let me just pull out here guys because uh, I actually JH just taught me something new about trading view I didn't know um, coming on log scale guys in fact I'm just gonna go out here to the uh, to the daily now if I put my if I throw my fib here and I go swing low swing high and I know JH and I've discussed this but uh, let me just go ahead and put it on for everybody else obviously if we go swing low swing high we can see that we have that uh, 618 fib level sitting there nicely at about 9,900 ish somewhere thereabouts guys if I throw on log scale basically that stays the same Nine, well that's because actually I've already made the change standby okay here we go all right so if i throw on log scale you can see that it basically stays the same 9950 um just it continues to uh to uh measure things lunarly right um it, which we know when we put on log scale log scale looks at things more in percentage uh, rather than actual dollar and uh, movement in dollars in, in relation to uh to bitcoin here um and so you'd expect that and this is why i basically just don't use you know fib levels on log scale um However, J or JH just pointed out to me that you at, the trading view does actually now have a function, and apparently this is fairly new, does now have a function where you can actually readjust these fibs for log scale. Now, I personally don't use this in uh, in trading. I haven't used this in the past. I know we did years ago try to calculate um, and do this on our own, which was a complete pain in the ass to do, uh, but apparently it does this now. And it's kind of a nice to know thing, but personally, I don't use it. But if you do want to readjust your fib levels for log scale, you just basically go into the settings, hit over here, and it does, now TradingView does now have this option to check and you can actually readjust your FIB levels based on log scale, which is, I had no idea this existed until he asked the question. And you can see once that does, it readjusts it again. And now I've got my 618 sitting at about 9,452, slight readjustment there, um, which you would expect to see on log scale when you're switching from a linear over to log. So anyway, just want to make sure that, uh, that everyone does know that because that was a function that, again, I, I probably won't use too much in my trading, but it is kind of something nice to reference. And like I said, years ago, we usually actually actually had a formula to figure this out um, and did it all longhand and readjusted our fibs longhand. It was just a major, major pain in the ass. And I found it to be more trouble than it was worth. But uh, but anyway, um, just a nice little nice to know in case you guys didn't know that. And really a big shout out to JH for pointing that out.
All right, back to your comments. Uh, Joe Williams says you do great work. Thanks, Joe. Kevin Roberts, 12K incoming. You, you nailed it, actually. It did hit very close to 12K. And then, of course, retrace. But uh, you did put that comment up before it hit and uh, in rock and roll, man. Uh, Mike gives thumbs up. Thanks. JH, another good question. JH says, uh, thanks, man. You're the best. I appreciate uh, I appreciate you uploading again. When you plot the fibs, does your confirmation strategy with these in the same work with these in the same way as your horizontal lines. I mean, a decisive close above, etc. Uh, does it work with sloping trend line, which is stronger, fibs or horizontal working levels, quote unquote? Um, well, basically, he's asking, you know, when I'm talking about a decisive break and decisive open and close, you know, if you're looking to go short, if you're looking to go long, if you're looking for a decisive break, um, which, you know, which holds more weight, a fib level, or if I'm if I'm understanding your question correctly, JH, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, which holds stronger a, a, a visual support that we have lined out here or a fib level. Um, well, typically, uh, I, first of all, I don't always trade these. So I want to be very, very clear. If you're asking me, you know, which holds more weight, if you're looking for a decisive break above or below, which holds more weight, um, I, I want to be very clear. I don't always trade each one of these levels. I have these all marked off because they're significant levels, um, uh, significant areas for support and or resistance or potential support and or resistance. Uh, but they don't necessarily mean these are the areas I'm going to scalp. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. It all depends on the pattern. It all depends on volume. It all depends on uh, the trend. Um, it depends on a number of things. Um, so hopefully I've kind of, I've, I've, I've ex expressed that a little bit uh, in what I tell you that I'm going to trade and what I'm not going to trade. Um, that being said, which holds more weight? Um, I would say, I, you know, it depends on what you're looking at. It really, really does. Uh, for example, if I, if I, again, pull my fib and we go swing low, swing high here, I would say the areas that have, where there's confluence with the visual areas of support and resistance, like this $10,650 zone, like our $9,950 zone here, like our $12,400 zone here with the, uh, the, the 236, like this very close to this 11,500, which that's, that's got our um, um, 11,500 where our FIB level is at 11,450, somewhere thereabouts. When you have that confluence with the visual support as well as the FIB levels, then that's something you very much want to pay attention to. But as far as which one holds more weight, if you're trying to uh, pick up a scalp or a swing trade or something like that, you know, again, it depends on the trend. It depends on volume. It depends on a pattern. It depends on a whole lot of different things. Um, so I just, I want to make sure that you guys know I'm not always trading each one of these levels all the time. I'm not always looking if it breaks up above to go long or if it breaks below to go short. It really, really does depend. For example, I'm not, I'm, I'm, even though we very likely will get a bounce at uh, 10,650, I think, um, we'll have to wait and see. It's been tested back here a couple times. Um, I do think because we're coming off of a um, of an ascending wedge or potentially a head and shoulders here, or excuse me, a symmetrical wedge or potential head and shoulders here, and it could break down with a vengeance, I'm not going to just have a have a short, uh, or excuse me, have a long down here waiting to get, to, uh, to get picked up because I know it could smash through this very, very easily. Um, so again, in this case, I wouldn't do that. However, down here at that $10,000 zone where I know that golden pocket is, I will have this sitting down here waiting because that would be a decent position for from if even if we did break down here on very strong volume, you typically would it wouldn't be a straight line all the way through 10,000. Yes, you, would it break through 11? Would it break through 10? Yeah, would it break through nine down here, right there at that golden pocket, the potential bottom uh, uh, tweezer bottom down here below? No, I'd expect a little bounce. Could it trade? Could it break down there? Yes, but uh, but I, I think we the probability of a bounce down here is much greater than it is at 10,650. Hopefully, I'm making sense. And with that, guys, I apologize. I can't get to all the comments. I'm going to have to get running here. With that, let me tie this up on a bow very quickly. If we do break below, uh, besides to break below 11,050, I'm expecting uh, a drop down to at least this $10,650 zone. Uh, if that breaks down, of course, I do think it's going to be a quick drop at least to uh, 10,000. I would expect to bounce off that zone at least one time, but I do think more than likely over time, we're going to come back down to at least the mid 9,000, 9,400 is what I'd be watching. If we do break above 12,000 here, guys, decisive four hour open and close above 12,000, I would expect us to come back up here and test 12,000. 400 again, probably the top of this descending resistance line, and we'll have to wait and see how price reacts. If we get a four-hour open and close above this zone here, which would take us outside of this overall descending resistance line or this uh, symmetrical wedge here, then of course I do think we're going to come back up and test this $13,000 zone once again. It'll be very interesting to see how price reacts at that point. And of course we're going to need to wait for a decisive break above 12,950 before I'm going to get excited, and we could potentially start talking about taking out this prior uh, prior high at 8,000, or excuse me, at 13. With that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, I uh, would appreciate an upvote. If you have enjoyed this content, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the uh, notification bell on the bottom left-hand corner. Until next time, guys, have a great weekend. This is Working, signing out.